We got this kind of step into the professional world. Everything kind of came organic for you. And then from there, it was just continuing. Just keep working hard, keep working at it. You work hard. It's not It's not easy at first. It's not like you just all of a sudden start, you know, shooting on your own and work comes out of nowhere. You've got you to gotta really be hungry. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, especially, you might do a job, you do, you do, you know, one job, and then you may not get another job for another month. Mm -hmm. You've got to get to be, you know, diligent about going out there, um, uh, Getting in front of working people. with contacts, yeah. in front of people. Um, so you're still doing assisting too on the side while you're kind of transitioning. I was a little bit. I was. It wasn't just like a stop assisting and then start shooting. It wasn't mm -hmm. that way. I do a job, and maybe I have a job for like another two months. Mm -hmm. So I'd assist until that period where I get another job. It got to the point where I was assisting less and less and shooting more, and then I just stopped altogether and started shooting more. Mm. Well, that's awesome. I, I love that story. So. Now I want to talk about, I know at a lot of um, a lot of your lectures, and I've been to several of them at WPPI. This is the only year that I didn't, I wasn't able to make it this year. Our baby, our second, we had our second baby, by the way. Two oh, weeks ago. Thank you. So uh, she held me back, my second baby. But uh, That's a good yeah, it was, it was the best reason to not go. So one of the things that I love about listening to you is, is when you talk, you talk about client relationships. You talk about it's the end how you know. interact. And uh, I think that's a huge part of your success. And I want to talk about that. Like, what do you feel like? Give us an example of what that is. Like, if you're dealing with Tyra Banks or you're dealing with Vanessa Williams, how are you interacting with them? The same way if I was working like at a, a Fortune 500 company, you're, you're dealing with people on that basic level. Forget about you know, their title or, or who they are, if they're a movie star or a CEO or, or somebody in the mailroom. Mm -hmm. you're, you're dealing with a person and finding that connection. So I do my research before every job mm -hmm. to find out who I'm shooting, what they've done, you know, about their life beyond just, you know, what move they've done. Mm -hmm. But I want to know about them, what, you know, what they love doing, what they love doing when they're, you know, on vacation or holiday. So when I'm shooting somebody, I'll ask about those things. You know, have you seen a great movie? Or have you seen this movie? Or, you know, where do you go on holiday? Or have you been to this vacation? Have you been there for vacation? It just breaks that barrier down where you can mm -hmm. like, communicate like like talk to a friend from high school mm -hmm. that's what it is and making them feel comfortable and and then also i've learned to make people feel comfortable you have to like divulge things about yourself mm -hmm. and when you open up to them about your life they open up to you about their life and then you get that connection and you get this this conversation that that never stops yeah and i like that do you feel like I know a lot of uh, a lot of celebrities are very down to earth and very just kind of casual and relaxed, and they just want to be some. Yeah, some. Uh, but then you still have the ones that have these pretty big egos. And do you find that that's yes. difficult to deal with, or how do you approach that? It is. It's definitely uh, difficult to deal with, but nobody says it's supposed to be easy because mm -hmm. it's not. But I enjoy that challenge. I mean, with with every job. It's not just dealing with a celebrity, but it's dealing with my client who's shooting that celebrity or who wants me to shoot that celebrity. So I've got to make my client happy. I've got to try to make that connection with that celebrity so I can get past that wall. Because everybody has that wall. Mm -hmm. Celebrity or not, everybody has this wall that they put up where they, they want to project this image to the world. And it's my job to break past that wall and get to the core of the person and try to hopefully, in my pictures, find their soul in the picture. Yeah, to create the images that you do, you have to get through that wall because these celebrities, these clients of yours are letting you see sides of them that I don't see in other people's work. Um, so it, it's pretty incredible how comfortable you can get with them. And and uh, do you, now you're you're probably our celebrity here. And so we, we did our research, we got you some green tea. <laughs> But uh, you're you're one of the most down to earth guys that I've I've ever met, and it's it's truly a pleasure to have you here. But do you find that you oftentimes will have to say go out and you know really have everything ready for them, like their likes and their preferences and just their favorite foods and their favorite everything ready? as much as possible. But more important than that is knowing about them. Mm -hmm. I think that is more important than having you know 
the, the right wine or the right food or the mm-hmm. right, you know, M&Ms or whatever, you know, the, the thing may be. More important than any of that is just knowing about their life. Yeah. Because I think everybody loves when you know something about them. You know, I'm, I'll get people who, who will email me saying they want to be an intern, like, oh, I love your work. Um, and then when I meet them, I find out they don't know anything about my work. Yeah. You know, it's, they're just like, you know, saying, give me lip service. So I want to know what people know about me. And sure, the same way that, you know, if I'm doing a shoot with any celebrity for the first time, they want to know that I know about them, their sure. life, you know, what movies they've done, you know, uh, have I seen. So, you know, I'm doing this big job now coming up in China. Mm-hmm. And I'm, in, I'm doing all my research about each person I'm shooting to find out everything I can about them because it'll make them feel comfortable mm-hmm. if I know everything I can about that person. And this goes beyond just like, uh, you know, going on to IMDb and looking up their oh, yeah. resume. I mean, more, this is like, more. you want to know, because I would think that if I were, if I were a celebrity and someone was coming up to me and just like, like almost like, oh, I loved you in this and I loved you in that and I loved you in this and I, this was awesome. And if they couldn't really connect, I would, I would have a hard time they would be the fan and I would be the celebrity and there would be that barrier there. So, I mean, how much time do you think you're spending? Say, let's say you get a new big celebrity. How much time do you think you spend researching oh, wow. about them? Wow. It, it depends on uh, how well known they are, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I ever like, even think about how much time I spend doing it. <laughs> I just do. like, How much time are you stocking? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I'm just curious, like, because some people think, oh, well, research is just going and doing 20 minutes of Google searching. But I don't think that's what it is. I mean, you're spending, yeah. you're trying to understand what someone is. I think, I would think that takes I, I get, at least I get hours. Lost, I get lost in, in the research part of it because I enjoy that, you know, learning about each person. Yeah. And sometimes that means going back and watching a movie that they've been in. And I love mm-hmm. movies, period, anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I find a movie that I haven't seen before, if I don't know that character, and maybe they won an award or an Academy Award or whatever for that movie. I'll go back and watch that movie so I can like relate to it mm-hmm. and be able to talk about it. Um, or if they've written a book, I want to find out something about that book. I find the book and read the book um, as much as you can. You want to be able to relate to that person. If you find out they love something and you want to make a connection, mm-hmm. learn about that thing so you can connect. Yeah, I love that. Essentially, what you've just said, if you were to simplify, it, is be their friend. I mean, absolutely. You're, you're, you're becoming their friend and, and having same interests and being able to talk more than just service level lip service type things. Exactly. So not just sports or yeah. the daily news, but really get in the weather. Yeah, the weather. <laughs> exactly. If you ever find yourself talking about the weather to a client, you have derailed. All right. <laughs> you had nothing else to talk about. What was cold today? Like yeah. <laughs> Quickly get back on track. <laughs> We're talking about weather now. Let's get back on our rails here. So, I want to go one step further and say you've had an extreme amount of success in this industry, not only in photography, but I mean, you've also been involved in film projects, correct? And TV, uh, on every really side of everything. Let's go back and say, what are these things that you feel like? And we'll identify the one thing. I want you to say one thing, but for right now, give me kind of a a list. Like what were those things that you feel has brought you to this point? What's made you successful? Well, even if you want to do success, because it's not just like you're successful and everything goes perfect all the time. It's, it's you know, ebbs and flow. It's, you know, you're, you're up one day, you're shooting all these things, and you're, you're down sometimes. Um, you know, I've gone through the dot-com bust in 99. I've gone mm-hmm. through uh, uh, 9-11 in New York. Um, Were you there country. when that yeah, happened? I was oh, that's there. Crazy. I was there in Midtown. Um, I've gone through, you know, 2008, the, the recession, mm-hmm. you know, you, you see things happen in the industry and it affects all of us, you know. People like, I remember when 2008 first happened, they're like, oh, is it re- affecting you? I'm like, well, yeah, I do live in the country also, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These things bounce off of Matthew Jordan Smith. I wish, no, no, it affects us all. <laughs> um, you learn to, it also humbles you. Yeah. To, to remind you that, uh, you know, I think I'm very blessed to be able to make a living as a photographer, doing what I love. I don't think that's, I don't take it for granted. I don't think it's, you know, something that's just happened to be the right place, right place, or I'm just so talented. Mm-hmm. I think I've been blessed in my life. Uh, and I know it's important to me to always give back in every way I can. I think it's important for me to, to always remember that success 
is not uh, a destination. It's a journey, and I'm still on a journey. Mm -hmm. So to maintain success, I got to work harder and harder and harder and stay focused on my goals and, and remember what's important in life. Uh, what's important about my photography and always push myself to go the extra mile. Yeah. Well, and what's incredible to me, and we talked about this earlier, but I mean, you are, are not only an amazing photographer, you know your lighting, you know your technique, you know gear, you, you are constantly expanding your knowledge in, in photography. That never ends for anybody. You're learning Chinese, which is awesome, because you can come over to my house and we can have dinner. I would love Chinese. that, actually. I would love that. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to learn Mandarin right now. Yeah. And, uh, it's not easy, but I love that challenge. You know, I'm, I've been trying to learn Japanese for like the last five years. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's not easy also, but I love, I love learning about people and cultures. And in that learning, it expands your mind, expands your, your ability to really capture all types of people in For a sure. different way. You know, it changes your skew, of, it changes your idea of what normal is as mm -hmm. well. You know, because you, know, you have this idea of what normal is in America. And then you go to Japan and normal's turn on its head. Yeah. You know, and, uh, <laughs> Almost literally when it comes to their toilets. <laughs> yeah. They're flipped upside down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so. <laughs> true, very true. So uh, what I get from this is that, you know, we always talk about uh, someone's circle of comfort, right? Our circle of comfort. Yeah. And uh, what I love about you is that you're constantly working to expand that circle. And you, you have to step outside of that circle Absolutely. Make what is uncomfortable comfortable, and then that circle expands. Exactly. And the more you do that, the more you can relate to clients, the more you can relate to uh, anybody, really. And, uh, and the more and you expand. grow, the more you grow, period. Yeah. So that's that's pretty incredible. It's incredible that you do all these things. Well, and you probably don't sleep. You're a machine. Do you're a machine. <laughs> do, you, do you need some gas? <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> so... Before I was asleep last night. Yeah, I don't know how. Sleep on the plane. I'm like, I thought I was busy, and then I meet people like you, and I'm like, okay, I'm not busy. My my busyness is like made up. That's that's something else. So now that we have you in, I, I want to do. We like to end these segments and talk a little about gear because everybody loves to know. I, you're a Sony oh, artisan. Yeah. You are a, a big Sony shooter, and uh, I want to end this with a little bit of a conclusion on what is your favorite gear. And you brought in the next six, which is. I actually have the next five at home and a really sweet lens for it too. Um, it has a red ring, which means it's expensive. <laughs> but um, tell us some of your favorite gear. Like what are those things that not only I, I want to go, let's separate, let's go personal life. Like okay. when I'm just out vacationing, having a good time. And then let's talk about a few items. Like when I'm in the studio, when I'm doing a shoot, these are like my must have, my go-to items. Okay. Well, my, my go-to items like for, for, for work, mm -hmm. for my, my book project is the A99. Mm. That, That's that an camera incredible is camera. Incredible camera. Sony's doing some amazing incredible things with incredible. imaging. Let, let me tell you how much I love this camera. So, for this book project, I'm shooting all these portraits outside, all over America. So some days it's like cloudy. Some days it's bright sun. Some days it's like you know rainy. It's it's America. It's mm -hmm. in, it's all the country showing the range of I guess you know of anything can happen in the country, and. It's not me for my crew, it's me and my fiance. Mm. And we're going around taking pictures, I'm setting up, but it's real people. So it's, it's not like a, a second chance to go back and get mm. the shot. I gotta know I have it. So with the A99, with the electronic viewfinder, it gives me the ability to see the image in the viewfinder the second I shoot it. So I can make sure everything's working perfectly. That's awesome. yeah. My light's going off, my strobe's working perfectly. Live it's histogram and everything? Everything. That's crazy. It's perfect. And I love that. One of the many features I love about that camera. But that is a lifesaver when you are working under pressure and mm -hmm. you can't get it again. Mm -hmm. And with this book, there's no going back. I've got to get yeah, it. I've got to get it and make sure I have that perfect shot that will last hopefully 200 years. Mm -hmm. That's that's my goal, to make yeah. that perfect shot each and every time. And that camera helps me get the shot. Yeah, the A99 is incredible. Actually, Joe, who is going to be editing this and who connected this whole thing up, he went out to the uh, the press release. It was like the, the Sony yes, press event for France. the A99, yeah. and uh, and he wrote this article. I'm like, dude, that's like 50 pages. He's like, the camera's just so good. I got it's it amazing. right a lot. <laughs> but it was a, it was impressive. Like from from everything, from start to finish, this camera is a very impressive camera. So 
What glass then are you going to be typically oh, leaning man. towards? I, I love my Carl Zeiss 85. I the 85? Love that lens. It's a magic um, number. <laughs> that lens, the 135, mm -hmm. the 100 macro, those are like my go to lenses. Mm -hmm. I think for my book project, I'd use the 85 more than any other lens. Mm. Uh, it's like the perfect portrait lens. It is. You know? It's an amazing uh, portrait lens. And it's called Zeiss Glass. It's just, it's <laughs> just amazing. Uh, but, you know, when I'm shooting behind the scenes, uh, my fiance shoots all the behind the scenes stuff when I'm shooting the book and the video stuff. And she's using, you know, an NEX6. She's mm -hmm. using an A55. She's using uh, uh, RX1, all by Sony, to capture those moments. And they don't let you down. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. You know? And this is my camera I carry me every day. This might be the camera. That's the that's the always non, with me exactly. Not professional. Not professional. But, yeah. But it is. Yeah. I you mean, can still do your work job on this. Absolutely. For sure. We were out this this past weekend, um, you know, doing research for the book, and I had this with me. Mm -hmm. And here I'm in the car, you know, coming here, and I gotta have the camera all the time. And yeah. This is what I use. Yeah. No, I have the next five, and uh, I got it for my wife. And this is how usually all my gifts from my wife turn out is I get it from my wife because she asked for it and she doesn't use it and it becomes mine, which is awesome because I'm like, okay, I'll just take this next five. But uh, it has some amazing features and I would look at an, an eyeballing the next six. I can't justify it right now, but but the next five had some groundbreaking features, especially like on the, the panoramic modes and, and oh, everything that it could do in shooting cool. raw and getting amazing performance out of such a small body. It's been awesome. So I have I, a story I'm, for you actually. So uh, on the holidays, I shoot with this camera, and um, a celebrity saw me shooting with it, mm -hmm. and it's, it's Angela Bassett and her husband, Courtney Vance. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Courtney says, oh, Matthew, I love that camera. Can I just hold it? Can I play with it? So they hold it. He's like, I want one. I want one. <laughs> so he gets two cameras for Christmas for he and his wife. Um, so a couple weeks ago, I get a call from him. He's like, okay, I'm doing this show on Broadway, and it's me and Tom Hanks. And Tom Hanks is jealous of this camera. He wants my camera. So I That's arranged awesome. for him to get a camera for Sony as well. So now Tom Hanks, Angela Bassett, Courtney Vance, they all have the NEX6. That's awesome. Okay. <laughs> now I can justify getting it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So we've talked about our camera, our lenses. Uh, now, as far as lighting goes, typically how are you lighting? Uh, uh. I am. I love Profoto lights. Mm -hmm. Love them to death. Um, I've been using them the last 15 20 years mm -hmm. uh, with my book project I am I'm taking lights with me mm -hmm. I'm going all over the country and I'm lighting every situ every every single portrait because I believe to have that consistent thread throughout the book they need to have that same feeling mm -hmm. so I'm lighting every portrait outside so I have a battery operated pack I'm using the the, uh, the pro 7b Okay. Uh, I'm using one strobe light with sometimes a magnum, sometimes a beauty dish mm. on location. And that gives it that same feeling throughout the book. Yeah. Can I shoot it just natural light? Absolutely. But I feel today when everybody has a camera, the only way to stand out is to make it have a, a high production feel. Yeah, for sure. So every shoot is, is lit. Mm -hmm. Everyone has the same feeling. I want the sky to have the same feeling. Whether I'm shooting in Virginia or Hawaii or Idaho or Nebraska, I want to have the same feeling. Mm -hmm. So I light every single portrait to give that high production value to it, to give that something different. I think we all love Pro Photo. That's just, unfortunately, some of our wallets don't love it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Pro Photo so makes awesome stuff, though. It's it's really good. But it, it's cool that you're you're basically. I mean, your fiance then is, is helping you out quite a bit on absolutely. these shoes. Absolutely, because that's a lot of. It's, well, not, it's a lot of travel. Yeah, it's a lot of travel. It's, it's great having her with me because she loves travel. I love photography. Um, so together we can we can travel all over America. We can meet people as a couple, as a family, mm -hmm. talk about the project, and and together bring it to life. That's awesome. And do you do much in the way of constant lighting or using more strobes? I use everything. Uh, sometimes I'm using uh, a hot light, mm -hmm. like a, a low DP light. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm using um, Kino flow lights, which I love as well. Um, Whatever also, gets the look you're going for, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, this past week I used uh, HMI lights. Mm -hmm. um, the big, big, the big crazy yeah, ones? The big crazy <laughs> ones. The big crazy ones. But I love I love light period. Yeah, I love that that high production feel 
of having a shot be sculpted by light. Even going back again to Ansel Adams, even though he didn't have strobes around, he's using light, the natural light, oh, for to sure. shape his images. And I'm doing the same thing today. Yeah. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for coming in, dude. It's been our thank pleasure you. having you. Pleasure's and been uh, my, pleasure been my. Yeah. Where can everybody find out more? So we have Kickstarter. We have your website. What's your website? We'll post the link below, by the way. It's MatthewJordanSmith.com. Okay. And you can also find me very easily on Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. Matthew underscore Jordan S. Awesome. And I assume the Kickstarter, we don't have a link yet, but we'll post that as soon as that goes up. Absolutely. Everything. Absolutely. So, thanks again. And we'll thank see you. you guys in the next episode. Thank you, guys. Always dream big. <laughs>